Alrighty, today we're going to take a look at how we can add API versioning to our system. My name is Vasilio Lenink and you're watching the .NET architecture and detailed design series where we are building a modular monolith notification system from scratch using industry's best practices. So why do we need API versioning? It basically gives us the ability to roll out some breaking changes or some new functionality to our system without breaking existing client integrations. Since the start of the series, I kind of cheated my way around, so I introduced from the get-go the v1 version inside the URL for the endpoints, and that is really the most basic approach you can take for versioning. But what happens if you want to take it next level or worse? For example, you never intended to version your API, and now at some point you need to do that. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how exactly you can do that. First of all, we're gonna need to install a couple of Nougat packages that I already pre-installed. So the ones that we need is ASP versioning HTTP and ASP versioning MVC API Explorer. We're gonna use these two Nougat packages to add API versioning strategies to our system. And the neat thing is, they integrate very well with minimal APIs and open API spec. So without further ado, let's take a look at the installer and I've added the versioning to the Swagger installer. And this made sense since I wanted to add versioning to the Swagger as well. So keeping it all in one place is the way to go. Opening Swagger installer, we can see that over here, some things have changed. First of all, we have this new add API versioning with a couple of options where we specify that we want a default API version to be 1.0. We're gonna mark the assumed default version when unspecified. Basically, whenever the client forgets to specify the version, we're gonna assume that it's version 1.0 and redirect it to version 1.0. And we're gonna specify that we want to use the URL segment API versioning strategy for our case, since we're using the V1 in the URL right now. Next, we're gonna take a look at all other API versioning strategies also. For this year, URL segment versioning, we're gonna use the substitute API version inside the URL. So inside our Swagger documentation, we won't have the placeholder for the version, but we'll have the real version over there and the group name format, which is default for all, so it's V, major, minor, and status. We're gonna enable API versioning, and over here we have something new, which is configure Swagger options. Essentially, this is basically us adding Swagger documentation to all our API versions, which we retrieve from API version descriptor provider. In our case, all are gonna have the same title and will have their respective version. Going back to Swagger installer, we have add Swagger generation, pretty simple. And we need to take a look at our host application right now. So program.cs. And right here we have our for each statement where we take our API versions and for each of them, we will create a separate URL with a swagger.json. And with that, all the plumbing code is already in place. Basically, you can copy paste all this implementation into your own solution and you'll be good to go. Well, with the exception of the title, since you don't want your API to be called notifications API, or I don't know, maybe you're developing a notifications API over there. So let's take a look at API endpoints. And over here, I have the push service endpoints, which we have already created in a past video. So what has changed over here? Basically, we have added a version set where we define the two versions that I want to showcase right now. So version 1.0 and version 2.0. But let's take a step back. Uh, over here, I have two versions inside a single endpoint definition. You wouldn't normally want to do that. For POC purposes, I've left it like this. However, in the real world scenario, you're gonna have two different API, sorry, endpoint definition classes, where you define, first of all, first version and then the second one. You're really gonna want to mix them up together. But hey, it's your implementation and your call right now. So the next thing that you would want to do is basically add these two parts to all your API endpoints. So basically with API version set, mentioning the version set that you've defined up on top and mapping to a specific version. In our case, it's mapping to 1.0 and mapping to 2.0. Essentially in the method itself, I have a small change over here, basically where I get the requested API version from the HTTP context, which is injected like usual. And I'm just basically console writing it. 
nothing else has changed over here. With all of that, I have one last change over here to do. Basically this hard-coded V1 over here, we don't need it. We want to have like V version two points API version. With this, we are basically letting know Swagger to replace this API version with the respective version in the Swagger documentation that is open right now. So I'm gonna debug the solution. And as you can see, we have V1 over here. If I select a different API definition, we have V2. And if I run this right now with the default, I'm gonna execute. I need to hit the breakpoint. And as you can see, we have API version two, which is basically the one that we have selected. And it's not really the default one if we forgot to mention it. And now I'm gonna stop and basically we're gonna take a look at how you can implement other API versioning strategies. By other API versioning strategies, I mean this part over here. We can use, for example, query string parameters to define our API versions. So I'm gonna go to push service endpoints and basically emulate your case. So I'm gonna remove API version from the definition itself and debug the current solution. Next thing, I'm gonna go to Postman over here and basically we have our API slash events and over here we can specify API slash version equals 2.0 or basically two in our case. I'm gonna send the request and as you can see, we basically hit our API endpoint and we can resume this. Now, one small change that you might want to show to your clients if you don't have Swagger, it's basically, you might want to report API versions for specific endpoint configurations, or you can enable that at Swagger installer, at installer level, sorry, basically by opting it for report API version equals true. So if I debug the solution once again right now and go back to Postman and send the same request, I'm gonna continue here. And basically if we open headers, we can see that we have an additional response header over here, API support version 1.0 and 2.0. Basically that small setting allowed us to send API versions, the supported ones to the client so, so it could know which versions he could call. Now, the next versioning strategy is more intricate a little bit, but still pretty easy to set up. So basically we can have over here, header API version reader and specify, for example, a custom header. In our case, X, sorry, API version. So if I debug this once again, go back to Postman and over here inside the headers, I'm gonna enable XAPI version. I can also remove it from query string params and send the request. As you can see, back to square one, we've hit the endpoint, continue, and we have a response over here. The last of the bunch is basically the media type API versioning strategy, where we can use our content type to specify which API version we want to run. So if I go back to Postman, I'm gonna disable this one and enable the content type header. And as you can see over here, we have the additional version added. So if I send this request right now, I'm gonna still hit the endpoint with version 2.0 and basically get back the response itself. The last part is somewhat more strange since we can combine versioning strategies basically by running API version reader, combine, and then specifying, for example, new URL segment API versioning, and then new query string API versioning, etc. This is more strange to me, at least since I've never really used more than one versioning strategy inside my APIs. Maybe I was fortunate that I didn't have, and we had the URL segment up on top from the get-go. But if you need to combine them, or if you want to define your own API versioning strategies, you can do that by inheriting from iAPI version reader and basically implementing your own strategies, or you can combine them using the start class over here. And with that, you're all armed up with the knowledge to add API versioning to enhance your own systems. If you like this kind of content, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and click the notification bell so you are up to date when the next video comes out. Until the next time, over here will be a link to some other interesting videos. See you next time.